Hi, it's Paul here from selfhelpforlife.com and today I'm going to cover how to overcome self-doubt and provide you with 12 powerful ways to deal with self-doubt today. Now, self-doubt is thinking that you can't do or can't achieve something that you really want to do or something that is important to you. And everyone has self-doubt. Even the most successful people have self-doubt. You know, even the most successful people have problems and anyone who has problems will have an element of self-doubt. It's just that the problems change and therefore the self-doubt about those problems changes. Even I have self-doubt. I mean, I've run now probably 250 hypnotherapy sessions, but I still sometimes have some feelings of self-doubt when I see a new client. Okay, so it's a human emotion. We all experience it to some degree. The only people I can think of that don't experience self-doubt are people with very high egos, people who believe that they know it all. And I don't think you'd want to be one of those people anyway. But self-doubt can be a reason for not being consistent with the work involved to achieve your goals. However, if you use self-doubt constructively, it will help you move forward towards your goals rather than keeping you stuck. And what's the opposite of self-doubt? Well, I believe that that is self-confidence. So now I'm going to cover 12 great ways to help you deal with self-doubt today. So the first one is to believe that you can figure things out. And this one comes from Brendan Burchard. He interviewed high achievers and he found that they had one thing in common. They believed that they could figure out a solution to whatever the problem was. So given enough time, energy, information, support, they would be able to figure things out. So I want you to think about times in the past where you have figured things out, maybe unexpected things, things that you weren't prepared for. And you'll find that you've solved problems, even problems that you thought you couldn't solve. So you already have the ability to figure things out. Okay, so one way to help you improve your level of self-confidence and reduce self-doubt is just to remember that in the past you have figured things out, you've found a way and you can do that in the future. Okay, so the second one is to accept your self-doubt. So accept that there could be some truth in your self-doubt. You know, there is a possibility that you could fail. Okay, but then decide that you're going to act, you're going to take action, you're going to do it anyway, purely for the lesson, for the experience, you know, whatever happens, just for the lesson, for the experience. So don't push that feeling of self-doubt away. Instead, accept it and do it anyway. Okay, so almost like feel the feeling, feel that self-doubt feeling and then just let it go. Okay, number three is dump, then destroy. So what's this one all about? Well, to understand this one more, let's explain a bit about the conscious and the subconscious mind. So the conscious mind really understands verbal language, self-talk, those kind of things. The subconscious mind, on the other hand, is much more around feelings and emotions. So this is a great exercise to satisfy both the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Okay, so the dumping part. What you do is you open a Word document or even grab your journal and write all your self-doubt thoughts about a particular situation or whatever it is that's bothering you and giving you that self-doubt feeling, okay? Keep writing, aim for 750 words, okay? So just write it all down and just let your mind go wild as you do that, okay? Now, once you've done that, we can move on to the destroy part. So if you've written this in Word or in a document on your computer, then you can move it into trash and then delete it permanently. So that's destroying it. If you've uh, handwritten it on a piece of paper or in your journal, you can rip that page out. You could even burn the page or you could just enjoy putting it into the bin, something like that. But what you want to achieve is what is called a cathartic effect, which is a feeling of release, a feeling of letting go of that self-doubt like a feeling of closure in a way, okay? So you want that feeling to pour out of yourself and that will mean that you no longer feel stuck. Okay, so number four is to have clarity and a plan. So get really clear on what you want. If you don't have a plan, 
if you haven't done much research and you're not quite sure what you want to do or what you need to do, then you're going to have self-doubt. It's like trying to do a presentation when you haven't prepared. You're going to have self-doubt in that situation. So preparation is important. So get clear on whatever the goal is and work out the steps and create a plan. You know, and that will remove then any doubts about the steps or the plan, and that will immediately give you more confidence. Now, you might need to take a bit of time to work out the goal, to work out the steps and work out the plan. You might need to um, maybe buy a course to learn the steps. You might need to maybe um, take advantage of a mentor, whatever it is, but just make sure you've got a clear plan, you know the steps, you know the roadmap, and that will really help you have more self-confidence. Okay, number five is to filter out things that make your self-doubt worse. So ask yourself, are there people that question what you do? Are there people that make your self-doubt worse? Do they criticize you? Do they not believe you can do something? Perhaps it's someone that predicts all the bad things that could happen and never offer any solutions. And remember that their advice is based on fear maybe with a positive intention that they don't want you to get hurt, but it's really based on their limitations and their fear. So if possible, let go of these people or spend less time with them. And that's not always easy, but if you can, that's definitely the right thing to do. And then also social media. Are you finding that when you spend time on social media, you're getting feelings of self-doubt? Maybe you're seeing super successful people that you feel you can never live up to. So maybe just limiting your time on social media uh, could be a way to help you as well. So number six is compare yourself to who you want to be. So many people with self-doubt compare themselves to other people and they look at what other people have that they don't have. The problem is, is you don't know exactly what someone else is thinking or feeling. You don't know how happy they really are or how fulfilled they really are. And social media probably doesn't help because you see super successful people and it's easy to compare yourself with them as well. So what you want to do instead of comparing yourself with others is compare yourself to who you want to be and also compare yourself today with who you were yesterday, a week ago, a month ago, a few years ago, and notice the progress you're making. So it's much more important that you're enjoying the journey and focusing on the progress that you are making and that will make you feel good. And everyone's journey is different anyway. You know, what you might need to do to achieve success can be very different to someone else. And the fulfillment and satisfaction you get from that could be very different to someone else as well. Number seven, spend more time visualizing yourself succeeding. So you're already thinking and maybe imagining how things might go wrong. You're imagining yourself messing things up. So instead, start visualizing what would happen when you do succeed. And if you can spend more time visualizing and focusing on what you want to happen, rather than ruminating about what you don't want, then that's gonna make a huge difference. So instead of spending that time thinking self-doubt kind of thoughts, start visualizing how you want things to go. Number eight is to change your physical state. This can be a really good way to quickly get some instant relief. So go for a walk, go for a run, do a workout, do some jumping jacks, just something to get your body moving. And what you'll find is that helps release stress and also put self-doubt back into its normal place. So it gives you more of a sense of perspective. Okay, number nine is to act now. So hesitation plants seeds of doubt. If you keep hesitating, those seeds of doubt get bigger and they become more of an issue. So act now if you can and that's practical. If not, then imagine what your best self would do and then take action as soon as you can and correct as you go along. There's a great saying, you've probably heard it of, ready, aim, fire. Okay, but I encourage you to try this instead. Ready, fire, aim. Okay, so you take action and then you adjust as you go along. So you take massive action and then adjust. Okay, so try that. Ready, fire, and then aim. So number 10 is to change the meaning of past events. So our brain automatically looks at the past when considering a new experience or problem. You know, we basically live today based on what happened in the past. 
So if it sees failure or difficulty last time, then it's going to create a self-doubt feeling and self-doubt thoughts this time. Now we obviously can't change the past, but we can change the meaning of past events. So start to think of past events as simply an event and focus on what did you learn from past experiences that's useful right now. And this could simply be that you're never going to do that again. And also ask yourself, how can I be grateful for this experience and from what I've learned from it? And this will help you create a different perception. It will help you change the meaning of past events. OK, so the next one is to get out of your comfort zone. So your goals, dreams and the best version of yourself are on the other side of your comfort zone. So what can you do today that is slightly new or slightly uncomfortable or even slightly scary? If you can do this, this will help your self-confidence improve and those self-doubt thoughts and feelings will start to fade into the background. So the last one, number 12, is to have a weekly evaluation ritual. So this is helpful because we want to change our thinking from judging to learning. So our self-talk uh, when you experience self-doubt is often along the lines of why did I do this or why did I forget to do this? More of a learning thought would be how can I do this better next time? So what the weekly evaluation ritual does is it helps you change those judging thoughts to learning thoughts. So ask yourself questions like what did I learn? What went well? Where could I improve? What did I do that made me feel good? What did I do that made me feel a little down? What did I do that made me feel happy? You know, what can I do better next time? Those kind of questions. And if you ask those questions and do this as a weekly ritual, then you'll start to change your self-talk from more of a judging type of self-talk to more of a learning. And when you do that, those feelings of disappointment and self-hate start to fade away. Okay, so they are my 12 ways to help you overcome self-doubt. I hope you found them useful. As always, put them into practice, take some of them and start trying them out yourself and just seeing which ones work best for you. And do share your experience with me. I'd love to hear how you're getting on. So do leave a comment and let me know which ones work best for you. And as always, please like this video if you found it useful. Do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the bell notification. So that way you're always notified whenever I release future videos. Do check out my website, which is selfhelpforlife.com. On there, you will find the written versions of most of my videos, along with links to my podcast, social media as well. And you can also grab my free ebook, 10 Strategies for Your Success. So thank you again for watching this video, and I look forward to sharing more great content with you very soon. Bye for now.